Hello and welcome to week three of this course and in week three we're going to be looking at the um, theory that's come to be known as Acton Network Theory. It really, it's really emerged in the last um, 30 years or so. There was a lot of a lot of publications in the 1990s when Acton Network Theory was was really sort of getting up and running and, and developing a, a distinctive perspective on science and technology. Um, and it's it's spread to a number of disciplines in that time over those over those 30 years, even though it's kind of difficult to summarize and explain um, because of the way that it works, really. It's a it's a very sort of practical theory that, that looks at specific. It tends to look at specific cases and specific case studies and sort of develops, you know, develops its approach out of these specific um, case studies. So it's it's kind of difficult to generalize, but it certainly has some interesting assumptions and ideas that um, that make it worthwhile to um, to look at. And it's been influential on um, on a number of other ideas and theories that we'll look at. So we're gonna we're gonna encounter a, a actor network theory or ANT as it's often called for short um, further in the course when when we look at when we look at other. Um, other articles and other subject matters where people have uh, researchers have sort of drawn upon um, the the the, um, the theoretical resources of actor network theory and used it to try to understand um, other sort of developments in 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 technology and science. So it, it originally approached in uh, it originally um, developed in the field of science studies where. Um, where the idea is is to really again look at concrete case studies of science and how it works, um, and is very much a, opposed to the idea of seeing um, science and technology as something finished. Um, in other words, as a kind of um, a, as a kind of a, a, a actor network theory likes to look at science and technology in the process of being in the process of being created. So it looks at inventions in laboratories and that kind of thing. Um, and is not so is not so taken with with looking at sort of, for example, when we talked about um, Heidegger and Borgman last week and the idea of uh, of a kind of essence of technology. That's very much um, something that's not um, that's not amenable to actor network theory, which 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 looks at at, at science and technology in the process of creation um, and takes quite a um, quite an original view actually of how. Of how that creation occurs. So the basic idea behind actor network theory, or ANT for short, is to capture how um, and to what extent technology is able to influence human behavior and vice versa. So, so again, it, it doesn't do this by starting from a definition of technology. It doesn't tell us um, what kind of thing technology is. Um, it doesn't tell us uh, what kind of thing human behavior is or society is, but it, it seeks to, to to develop an approach that looks at the at the at the intersections at the um, at the influence the mutual influence and and the, the the sort of network which is a really big word and an important word for actor network theory the kind of networks that are developed by technology and the way it enters into context with human behavior and the way it develops um, particular kind of systems to be able to do things and accomplish um, and accomplish things in a in a sort of social material context. So so it, it looks at, at its influence of technology and human behavior. Um, and the two of the most um, prominent thinkers in the 1990s were uh, Bruno Latour um, and Michel Caillon. Um, both, I believe, French um, are working in, in the French, the French-speaking field, the French-speaking world. And John Law uh, was a third person um, who was who was famously associated with A and T um, in the early days. So here we see the 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 equation of of the human uh, of human behavior and, and human human activity and, and non-human, um, which includes, of course, technology, architecture, and so on. Um, so, so ant actor network theory sort of breaks down the ontological differences between between these different sort of fields, between these different 
um, these different spheres, and it 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 argues that there, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't take human actors um, to be different to non-human actors when we're looking at how they combine and form networks. Um, and in the theory of actor network theory, both human and non-human actors are referred to as a and um, I'm sorry as actants, um, whether they be you know whether they be human or, or not, they're all sort of acting within these systems. Um, and you'll notice this this recalls a little bit um, in week one when we were sort of looking at definitions of technology and we we sort of came upon the, the idea of tools and then we were looking at rules as a kind of way of capturing, you know, rule governed behavior, which is part of technology. And then we turn to, you know, technological systems as as sort of bringing these two things together. So rules and tools and, and commands and everything um, form part of a, a techno system. So actor network theory very much thinks, um, I think similarly in terms of, of, a, of a technological system that in, encompasses and incorporates human actors, um, technology, um, you know, other sort of material pieces that have a role in the network. So it, you know we can see some some similarities there and and, and how um, there's a sort of coalescence of these of these ideas and we'll see that in play in in actor network theory. All right, let's um try and dig a little deeper in how actor network theory sees technology, um, for particularly for Bruno Latour. Um, technology is, is now integral to our understanding of human society to the extent that human nature is fundamentally dependent on technology. Um, so the way we sort of understand human nature, the way we sort of make sense of it, um, and it, you know, so our, our understanding of, of human nature is itself, of course, mediated by technology. We use, uh, we use technology to to sort of you know investigate blood pressure and, and sort of basic medical basic medical knowledge is, is formed through technology um, so it's it's hard it would be hard to say where the you know where the sort of barrier lies there are obviously things like pacemakers and other pieces of that, that sort of can be inserted into human bodies but are themselves pieces of technology but can be made congruent with the way uh, with with the way human bodies work and sort of can enhance bodily functions uh, monitoring technology of course um, that sort of monitors when we exercise and when we when we work and sort of tracks us um, so so in all of these ways we see technology becoming central to to understanding human society and really beginning to shape our view of human nature and, and, and our sort of perspective on human nature and how it works, what it's capable of. Um, a lot of that is now, of course, mediated by, um, mediated by technology. So we have developed and shaped technology, but now technology is shaping us. Um, again, returning to the sort of tech technology as a sort of technological system idea that, that we're now inside the technological um, the technological system. It's it's except for actor network theory. Of course, it's a network rather than a system. But we are we are in a very real sense part of the the network. We're not outside the network watching technology develop. But we're we're part of the interaction where you know we each of us um, when we work or when we perform different activities, we sort of enter into networks with with different technologies to achieve different things, whether it's um, computer monitors, whether it's sort of um, other sort of, um, you know, when we exercise, we use exercise monitoring technology. So we, we sort of work together in different, um, in different practices and different activities. Uh, we sort of brought together with technology to achieve, um, to achieve different, um, different processes and different, different results. So technology now shapes, controls, and influences our nature. Um, and of course, this isn't this isn't sort of unique to actor network theory to acknowledge this. This has been um, acknowledged in a number of um, a number of recent sort of studies of, about technology and nature, and, and thinking about how how technology affects our, 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 our sort of basic humanity. 
Um, but Ant is definitely one of the one of the theories that sort of takes this idea and, and develops um, and develops a specific perspective on how technology actually shapes and influences our, our own human nature and of course external um, external non-human nature as, as well is similarly sort of shaped and controlled and our access to it is regulated by um, by technology so we could say we are now all part of a technologically interconnected um, heterogeneous and complex system um, so we, we're sort of we're part of the system we work within it uh, we're not sort of separated from it as as human actors sort of um, on the outside dominating and controlling controlling it rather we're sort of inside it working with it now in Latour's essay on actor network theory um, we come upon this this idea and it's something he emphasizes quite um, quite strongly here that, that the social and what we think of as social for example we could contrast the social to the natural or to the material um, so that when we think of it as, as a way of um, as a way of sort of combining a way of joining the social is is when you know human beings sort of come together to do uniquely sort of human um, social tasks and, and sort of to accomplish things so that's that's sort of the basic <clears throat> the basic idea of, of the social as a kind of relationship um, that exists between human beings and the different sort of ways <clears throat> excuse me the different rules the different um, the different principles the different um, ideas that regulate those relationships so for, for, for Latour the social is not a, it's not a specific kind of material or domain it doesn't it doesn't require any specific kind of material the capacity for language the um, you know any kind of sort of human property rather it's a type of connection among things that are not themselves social um, so so something becomes social by by entering in a, into a particular kind of connection, a particular kind of network. Um, it's not a sort of property or thing that something can acquire. Um, it's, a kind of, it's a kind of connection. So the social in essence refers to this process of reassociating um, and reassembling things, right? So one thing we see here again is, is the contrast between a sort of finished perspective where we look at sort of society as something finished you know there it is and there are there are these different institutions there are these different people in these different kind of relationships um, and we see here with actor network theory a very much a, a sort of tendency to um, to take a different perspective where it's not not looking at society as something sort of finished which you, you're sort of passively absorbing, um, sorry, observing the connections um, and looking at how it works, but thinking of society as, as something that's something that that happens, a, a sort of happening um, that takes place when things are joined or things are connected. So we might say the social is a sort of process of associating or assembling things. Um, so once that process has taken place, we can see that things have become social right but that's because they've they've gone through this process of sort of assembling um, and associating in certain ways and then when we when we sort of look back on those things and that uh, um, that have been assembled we might we might sort of look at it and say that that you know those things must be social because they're in this this connection which for actor network theory is is getting things the, the wrong way around right because things become social when they're taken into this process of association into this into this particular type of connection um, so it, it's not a property of things it, it's it's the way they acquire these different um, these different connections these different kind of associations that that make something social so again any sort of material um, non-human thing can can become um, can become part of a social relationship um, as long as as long as it's sort of connected to to other things in a certain way so as Latour puts it on page 281 
To be social is no longer a safe and unproblematic property. It is a movement that may fail to trace any new connection and may fail to redesign any well-formed assemblage. Um, so there's, there's some interesting things here. Firstly, the the idea of a movement again suggests that that, that the social is, you know, something that 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 ha something that happens, something that takes place when connections are formed. Um, so it's, it's again this idea of of looking at of looking at society as something that that is that is formed that happens in in a movement in a in a sort of joining together, not as a kind of finished thing that has that has specific properties that make it what it is. You know, it's what it is because it's been it's been connected and joined um, in certain ways. The other thing here is is the the focus on what may fail to trace any new connection, um, what may fail to to redesign any well formed assemblage. So this is a this is the, the um, a kind of interesting point that that sometimes you know one thing that actor network theory um, sometimes says is, is that social analysis usually sort of goes with, with the successful the things that have been successful and it takes those as marks of the social but there's there's this also you know a, a lot of things fail be, to become social because the the connections the assemblages don't work you know the, the that way of designing things doesn't produce any um anything profitable anything useful um so it's so it, it it's often it's often it's often failure. It's it's a sort of trial and error thing. Um, so social entities, institutions, and norms are always the result of this prior work of constructing connections and assembling relations. Um, but of course, the the ones that we the ones that that sort of come to fruition are the successful ones. Um, and we are we sort of forget that there's a lot of of work of attempt to make connections and relationships that, that doesn't succeed that sort of goes by the wayside and fails um, so the ones that sort of familiar that we familiar with are, are the ones that have sort of successfully traced new connections and new ways of relating things a Sort of common claim in actor network theory is that it sees itself as seeking to follow the actors them, themselves. So it, and again, this is part of the the focus on trying to trying to catch society or sort of technological um, invention to trying to catch it in the process of discovery. So Ant is, is not, as we said, it's not focused on seeing seeing things when they're when they've been sort of completed and finished. Um, and they're waiting there to be inspected. It, it wants to look at things in the process of discovery, in the process of, of finding um, innovations and connections that work. So rather than trying to see whether innovations and new practices fit with what is currently accepted as social, we should learn from them how to extend change and develop our understanding of what the social is and what things are part of it. Um, so we we should look at innovations and, and new practices um, instead of asking you know whether they they fit in with what currently exists. We should look at them in terms of how they're trying to extend and change our concept of, of what the social is. So this is an, a sort of interesting point here that that Ant sees the social as something that's in the process of change, in the process of transformation and discovery. Um, and it has an interesting critique of our, of our traditional and typical ways of looking at, at, what, at what, makes, what makes something social, what, what makes up society, um, that it, it's, it claims that what we typically do is simply take everything that's, that's been innovated and accepted so far and, and we sort of judge that that's, that makes up our stock of things that are social. Right. And in, in doing so, all that we're really doing, again, according to our actor network theory, is, is we're just really supporting the status quo. We're supporting what currently exists and we're making it more difficult for us to understand the kind of the transforming and the changing um, that's taking place in new innovations and new practices. Um, so actor network theory puts it on, on puts itself um, on the side of, of the the sort of innovators, the 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 creators who are trying to change 
you know current definitions and to develop new ways of of connecting things um and it it looks at sort of discovery and technological change as essentially this you know it's this process of, of developing new connections that catch on socially and become and sort of transform the social world and become part of a sort of new way of doing things as we said actor network theory sees humans uh, and non-human actors as equal players who participate in social networks designed to achieve specific goals and ends um, so the ends and goals depend depend on, on the actors but both humans and non-human actors can can take up and play these roles um, of participating in social net networks um, and link up together in specific sort of configurations to be able to achieve um, achieve specific purposes so society itself is like a complex web of interlinked actor networks um, all sort of forming together and doing uh, at the micro level micro net networks that link up uh, with broader networks outside and form sort of bigger networks um, that can then achieve more more sort of impactful things on a social scale in actor network theory society nature and technology are seen as so interlinked that it is impossible to separate them and analyze them as separate entities okay so another interesting idea here that 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 we can't you know again it would be folly to to ask ourselves about something like an essence of technology and to say you know what's the what's the essence what's the basic what's the idea of technology in separation from you know thinking about society and also thinking about nature right for actor network theory generally this idea of giving definitions of, of defining something is um is is not a very helpful thing to do it's much more it's much more fruitful for actor network theory to look at how specific inventions develop to see how they draw on um you know sort of social institutions how they develop in sort of scientific institutions medical institutions and how they how they affect net natural processes how they draw on natural processes in the laboratory and how those processes link up with nature and the sort of technical um the technical work in the in the laboratory so all these things are seen as connected and linked and it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to separate them and and to look for individual essences of what makes something social what makes something natural and what makes something technological they're all parts they're all parts of, of networks and the only way we can understand them is to see how they operate together to achieve um, specific effects within within particular networks so an example of a, of a sort of non-human actor i think um, one of the examples Latour uses is, is the electronic door closer. So by installing a sensor controlled automatic door closer, a piece of technology can be made to function like a, a human door person, right? So we're familiar with the, um, the door person who sort of holds open the door when, when clients or, or whoever comes, whether it's at a hotel or a, um, you know, an expensive apartment building or, or whatever um that there's a there's a function that can be fulfilled like a human sorry by a human being who who does a job right but we could also install a piece of technology um a, a sensor controlled automatic door closer to do the same thing right you know the, the door could open and it can close when it senses a human person so it's doing the same thing as the door closer right and again think of so the relationship with how technology can can incorporate social norms here as as well the idea of of you know closing the door as something that's part of social etiquette you know you don't walk into a room and leave the door open um so in, cl in closing the door the the door closer is is also sort of fulfilling a kind of a normative or we could even sort of stretch and say an ethical function here to close the door it's performing effect it's performing a function which could also be performed by a human being of making sure that the norm is adhered to um you know similar technology and we can think of in in cars that um 
that that has sort of protections if 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 somebody doesn't put their seatbelt on for example you know there's a beep the car can sort of so um so the car can enforce a particular rule or enforce a particular car like you know make sure you um enforce a particular norm like make sure you wear your seatbelt. um and so the piece of technology can play the same role um that a human person or a, or a sort of human uh, a sort of um can play the same role as a as a sort of edu educative function that we think of as being played by human beings so this gives a lot of credence to the idea that technology can take on um you know that technology and human beings can work together in networks um and we should treat human and non-human actors as as kind of similar as being able to fulfill similar functions right they're just different pieces in the network that fulfill um fulfill different functions in the relationship so can you think of any other examples and this is one of the things we're going to be thinking about this week where a piece of technology um performs a human task and i mean i think once we start thinking we we see them everywhere don't we we see things like automatic checkouts at the supermarket um instead of having somebody sort of bar you know scan the barcode you can the, you can have an automatic checkout which which sort of um you know takes away the the role of the checkout person at the supermarket um we can have microwave a microwave re replacing a cook so a microwave meal instead of um preparing um and cooking dinner and of course automatic turnstiles replacing ticket collectors um you know at subways at, at um sports games and so on where again a, a function that can be performed by a human being collecting tickets can also be performed by a piece of technology um and and the the turnstile can also sort of you know play a role with human actors to make sure um to make sure uh, to ensure safety and security and and so on um so that so that you know that then we can you can sort of have a network that includes these pieces of technology performing human functions and human actors as well doing different things um, to make sure that the um, the network runs efficiently and appropriately so this idea supports actor networks the actor network theory's view of generalized symmetry so objects text and technologies can sometimes play the role of actors within social networks um and that's the the justification for ant's view that we should treat them as as kind of equivalent all right let's look at the the second paper we we're focusing on this week which is sergio sismondo and the paper is actor network theory critical considerations and unlike latour um who is a um I guess a proponent of actor network theory um Sismondo is not directly associated as one of its proponents but he's giving us a more um a slightly more critical take on some of its on some of its potentials and and we'll go through a number of the um a number of the critical um considerations that have been raised about ANT in the last um last few years So for Sismondo, actor network theory is really capturing the importance of science and technology in the modern world. Science and technology have mixed humans and non-humans together in ways that have generated a dramatic expansion um, of, of the modern social world. So the way that science and technology have become so important to the world that, that we live in and, and the way that that are they coordinate so much of our behavior and so much of our behavior um fits into the different um the different operations of of pieces of of technology um that it's it's created this massive expansion of of the social world that now includes and involves um science and technology as sort of um as as dramatic acting pieces in this modern expansion So we can describe 
Actor Network's theories um, ontology, which means it's sort of view of, of reality of what it's made up of, um, as essentially a kind of re relational materiality. Um, so it's it's view of what makes what makes something real, um, what makes something material, what's the what's the sort of real substance behind things. It's really about relations that for A and T relations are really the thing that matters. So objects are defined by their roles in networks. Both technical objects and social groups are the result of network building, of putting things into different um, into different systems of relations. This is illustrated by the example of Pasteur and microbes, Louis Pasteur. Pasteur brings actors and scientifically defined entities like microbes into different alliances, leading to a reshaping of the social world. Right. So it's so this is a one of the, the um, case studies of of A and T in, in the laboratory and the way um, famous inventors like Pasteur work to 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 bring about their you know their their sort of world defining inventions um, and A and T describes it in in these ways in in, in terms of building alliances um, as though you're sort of building you know you're sort of building strength by building relations. But you're building alliances with with things like, you know, the microbes themselves that are going into the definition of disease and resistance um, of the different the different actors that that sort of part of the laboratory um, of the institutions that that form part of that sort of supervise the, the laboratory and broader social institutions and so on, that all of these are being brought into alliances that that is reshaping the world and is allowing um, different things to, you know, the sort of newly discovered uh, microbes and, and newly discovered, um, uh, you know, newly discovered medicines like penicillin to play a role, um, to, to play a role not, not just in the laboratory, but to play a role in a social context. So they become, um, they become important parts of, of how we, um, of how we sort of regulate health, of how we think about health in a social context. And that happens through this building of alliances um, and through the way that actors like Pasteur um, bring things into different contexts and relationships in the laboratory and then build out from there to build um, broader networks that sort of reshape the social world to include these new, these new entities like um, you know, penicillin and, and other medicines. All right, um, let's look at the three objections that Sismondo uh, raises about A and T, starting with the, the first one about practices and cultures. A and T sees scientists, engineers, and technologists as rational actors seeking to use resources to achieve their goals. Right? So it, in its case studies, when it, when it describes Pasteur and it describes these, these other uh, Marie Curie and these other inventors who are who are in in the laboratory using um, using different techniques and tools to, to make discoveries. Um, they describe them as, as sort of as as rational actors who are just you know self interested beings trying to use their resources um, to achieve their, their goals. However, we can object here that. It's hard to even explain the idea of what is rational without mentioning cultural beliefs and practices. That our, our idea of rationality is in fact, excuse me, informed by our cultural beliefs and our, and our existing practices. For example, the idea of trust, which is very important to scientific work, um, was actually an effect of the culture of gentlemanly trust in the 17th century. Um, so it was because of this important cultural belief that a particular a particular tradition of scientific work was inaugurated, which sort of depended on people sharing discoveries um, and being open with each other about what they were doing. But this was because of a, of a culture that was not that, that was not just a rational thing, but a culture that promoted a particular a particular definition, an idea of what rational scientific means of what rational scientific work actually means. So a really um, 
significant question here is how is a and t able to take account of the role of culture and cultural practices how does it take account of the of their role in in the way that science um, scientists and engineers work um, so this is something you know given that that it, it relies on these case studies and it sees the formation of social networks and, and social relationships through these case studies. Um, but it, it also has to make sure it doesn't beg the question, that it doesn't, it doesn't assume those cultural practices uh, when it's doing the case studies, that it, it has to take account of how they influence uh, the very way that scientists and engineers behave in the first place. Another problem is, is the problem of agency. And this is because actor network theory tends to focus on successful agency, the work of heroic scientists and engineers. But does this mean that it misses marginalized perspectives and voices and actors who were suppressed um, in existing networks? So the, the ones that didn't make it, the ones that failed, um, you know, given that it's it's given that A and T focuses on you know, Pasteur and Marie Curie and inventors who were successful, um, you know, does it miss the, the other sort of um, voices who weren't able to to bring their ideas to fruition? So this this might be important when we come to and in the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about the social constructionist um, perspective and, and which very much focuses on these sort of marginalized perspectives and voices. Um, and we'll see whether there's there's something here about whether ant actor network theory doesn't you know doesn't manage to incorporate that perspective does you know sometimes it may be that, that good ideas don't actually succeed um, and how do we how do we how do we register that in our theories if if the only case studies we focus in we focus on are ones where successful social networks were built so that's something to to bear in mind also. Um, this part of this problem is is that A and T downplays the role of intentionality in understanding agency, um, seeing agency as the effect of participation in a network. So in, intentionality is the understanding you have of what you're doing when you're doing it. Um, and the idea here, think of the the door closer example again, right? That that w when a human when a human being opens a, a door um, to let somebody else in. They have an understanding in, in their mind of what they are doing. Um, they they might um, say if if you ask them about it that there's a you know there's a norm you you open doors for people you close the door when you know when everybody's in, in the room or whatever. But we have an understanding of our own agency. Um, it's it's much harder to say that material things pieces of technology have an understanding of of their agency. And so that that means we're we we seem to be downplaying the role of intentionality and agency. And the question here is whether whether we we want to say that that pieces of technology like door closers or whatever, whether they're agents in the full sense, or whether they can be agents in the full sense that human beings are agents, given that they have these extra capacities like intentionality that give them an understanding of. Of, of the social act in the process of doing it, and you know that might be um, that might be significant in thinking about about our capacity to sort of change and transform our social reality. All right, the third problem ANT focuses on is um, ANT. Sorry, that's the Sismondo focuses on for ANT um, is the problem of, of realism. And for any, I guess, for any relational ontology like ANT that takes networks um, as primary, this is a, an issue. So because it sees objects as having properties only insofar as they belong to social networks, ANT has a difficult time acknowledging that scientists discover rather than create the properties of natural things, right? So if, if things only have properties insofar as, natural, as, as they belong to networks, does that mean that they have no sort of intrinsic properties of, of their own? Do they have properties just as natural things? Um, or do scientists just discover and or do they create those properties when they make when they make up social networks? Um, so it's it's a problem because we often think about 
you know, we often think about discovery in terms of finding things which were there anyway. We think about discovery in terms of finding things in nature that we hadn't seen before, that we hadn't discovered, that we hadn't found out, as though they were sort of there anyway, waiting to be found. Um, and that's that that clashes with the with the actor network theory perspective of seeing things um, as really only having properties when they belong to networks, when they perform functions um, in certain sort of social networks. So, so how do we get this, this sort of idea of realism? How do we acknowledge that within actor network theory? How do we acknowledge that things have their own properties in, in themselves? Or do we want to just say that, that, you know, a relational ontology is preferable, that, you know, it's better to think of things as having properties only when they belong to networks?